welcome to Model Train Fun. My name is Bo Jensen and today we're going to look at a little experiment I'm going to try and do. Whoop. And here I better stop myself because I actually mean it when I say it's an experiment. This is not a tutorial. I'm going to talk about how to convert uh, two rail to three rail, uh, but lots of things can go wrong and you might end up with a locomotive that don't work at all. You might fry your decoder and so on. So. Uh, please uh, be very careful if you attempt to do this uh, and do seek help from somebody who knows how to. Uh, and in addition to that, you have to use a soldering iron and so on. Uh, please follow all relevant safety instructions. Now back to the video. Um, so there's been a lot of talk lately and questions about uh, how to convert a, a two rail locomotive into a three rail locomotive. Uh, at the same time, I've been looking at here my uh, BR-150, uh, the nice weather and model here from Macklin. Um, wouldn't it be nice actually to get uh, another one of those so I could uh, use it in double traction? However, it would be a little sad to have one uh, with the same road number. Um, now, the uh, cool thing is that uh, Trix make a similar locomotive. So I haven't uh, unboxed it yet, so we have it here. So this is the uh, Trix uh, 22619. Uh, so this is actually exactly the same model, uh, just in uh, two rail. So my thought was, well, w would it be possible, and here I got a spare part, uh, so um, the sliders uh, that I basically looked up in the manual for the Macklin one uh, to figure out what number was, what if I just add the sliders to there uh, would I be able to uh, make it actually uh, run on three rail? I'm sure there's more to it than just uh, adding the sliders, but uh, for sure we need uh, the sliders. So uh, let's uh, open up uh, the uh, tricks box and see what's in it. So definitely uh, looks like the same locomotive. I would hope it's a different model number or prototype ID. So this is uh, 144 here. Actually, I see they are exactly the same, okay? So, um, let's try and go ahead and open it. Yeah, need to slide it out of the box. Oh, this is tight. Well, a little disappointed that it has the same uh, prototype ID. I was kind of hoping it uh, would have another one. Well, still, let's uh, try out and see uh, what we have. We have here the locomotive. All right, give me just a second. Same locomotive as before. It. Uh, Pretty much uh, looks a lot like this one, if we hold them up next to each other. The only thing is this one down here doesn't have a slider. I don't know which end uh, the slider would go in. I see uh, this is uh, cab one here, and that's cab one there uh, for the Macklin one. So in truth, I should turn it around so we have them like this. And then we see uh, these are the cab ones here, and that's where the slider is. All right. So the slider should uh, go here, and we can see there is something here to put the slider in. Interesting. Before I'm going to attempt anything uh, with the uh, Trix locomotive, I'm going to verify that it actually works. Um, I'm going to do that uh, using my mobile station 2, but I might as well have uh, used my uh, central station 3. Uh, so do remember that the uh, Merklin uh, controllers, both the mobile station and the central station, actually also can uh, run uh, two rail. Um, I do have here uh, my uh, Merklin C-Track that's connected uh, to the... Um, uh, to the uh, mobile station and you would say well can I run two rail on these and yes I actually can uh, do remember here that you see there's uh, two wires going in there's a brown and a red so the red goes to the center and the brown goes uh, to the rail however if you turn uh, the uh, track around and if you noticed um, here 
you can actually uh, cut the track. It might be hard to see, but it's actually cut here right next to. So the, these, this uh, track is actually set up to be a contact track. When it's a contact track, there's no uh, electricity between the two rails. So in um, what I basically just need to do is it's okay with the brown here on one rail. So you see that's actually brown on this one here. And uh, that's uh, for this tab here. And when we turn it around, that tab is actually that rail. Now, if I want to connect something to the other uh, rail, then I basically just do that in the other end. So the only trick I have to do here is uh, to remove the uh, red and then connect it in the other end uh, on the B in the uh, other end of the track. And remember, you can only do this if you have disconnected the two rails and turned it into a contact track. Why is that? Well, because otherwise you would actually uh, short circuit it. So um, that means now I can uh, connect it up. We have the uh, locomotive here, okay, and I can turn on my uh, mobile station two. Give me a second. All right, it should be uh, starting up. Looks like it's starting up. Excellent. We are in stop mode. Uh, we take it out of stop mode. Now, uh, this particular Trix locomotive, um, I believe it's uh, pretty much the same decoder as in the Macklin one. So it also has MFX, and you can see it as MFX. Good thing. So that has already proven I haven't short circuit anything. And then I have a good chance of getting to the locomotive. So we have the locomotive here. We turn on the light. I don't know if you can see it, but it is actually red now and now it's white so yes it did indeed it looks like it's working i believe uh, this one down here is the whistle all right and we can uh, turn the knob and we can see it runs right so yes you can actually run a two rail locomotive uh, with macklin controllers and you can run it on the uh, let's say the normal tracks uh, and that's because we can turn those into contact tracks. Of course, you cannot do this uh, with the uh, turnouts and, and so on, right? So this is only a trick you can do on the straights and the uh, curved tracks. Before we start disassembling the uh, locomotives, uh, let's uh, just uh, look underneath and see uh, what we can see there are of differences. So this one over here is the Macklin one and this is the uh, Trix one. So this one is using the three rail and that one uh, the two rail. So if we look underneath the Macklin one, yes, indeed, we have, a, we have a slider here. Okay, what else do we have? Let me just see if I can zoom in a little more so you can see there's a slider. Okay, this boogie here doesn't have anything over on this side. Other than that, I don't see anything uh, worth noting. Well, we do see it has uh, traction tires. I would expect the other one to have traction tires as well. Um, let's look at the uh, Trix one, so the two rail. So here we look at cab one and we see uh, there's no slider, but there's this thingy here and you can see it actually goes in and touches the wheel. So this is uh, some kind of uh, power pickup, this one here. What I suspect is uh, the <clears throat> it picks up for the two rails. You see there's no power pickup over here. So it's probably directly the wheels that are connected to something and then the wheels uh, are isolated uh, from each other's. So this one here over here will uh, pick up uh, from uh, this side of the track and over here from the track there will probably be something internally here on the axle because you see nothing here on the sides. If we go to the uh, other end, you see there's one similar and it picks up uh, over to this side as well. And if you noticed, it's the, it's the same side that they uh, pick up on. So over here, right on the camera, when we have it upside down, it's to the left, it's uh, to the left. 
Let's uh, try and compare the manual. So here I have the uh, manual for the uh, Macklin edition, which is Macklin uh, 37858. And then um, I have, oh, let me see if I can change it here. Here I got the uh, Trix edition, which is the Trix uh, 22619. So if we go and look at the uh, Macklin edition here, and we, uh, find the uh, diagrams. So we got the diagrams here. Um, one thing we'll notice, uh, which is the difference uh, from this one and the tricks, is basically here as a slider. Other than that, I would say uh, everything else here on the drawing uh, looks the same. Uh, we can go and verify here uh, with the uh, tricks one. So here we have the tricks one. We changed back. You see some of the things are arranged a little different, but it is really over here the difference is. So if we look here at the, um, the uh, tricks one, you will see there is uh, the, the, the power uh, feeders here from the wheels that are the difference. So basically here you see on the tricks it has the power feeders on the wheels and on the Macklin it has the slider instead, but notice there's no uh, nothing on the uh, other boogie here, which uh, matches uh, what we saw before. Now, if uh, we compare the um, the description of the items on the drawing from before, uh, you can see we can uh, shift a little between them here uh, in order to see uh, what is different. Uh, if you actually take time to do so, you'll discover the decoder here is a different uh, spare part. If you uh, look at it, then the boogie, everything included on the boogie, these ones here are different as well. So if we shift it over to the tricks one, we will see, oh, let me just see if I can get something to draw with here. See the decoder here is a different number and the boogies here are different numbers uh, than the other one. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, uh, the the slifer, which we got here, right? So if we change them over, if we look at the first one here, 358041 and 356772, we see here 354664, 354661, which are different numbers. And by the way, the slifer is here as well. So uh, what does that actually mean? Well, if we uh, go look at the drawing, it means we already identified the uh, the slider as different. We identified there was one missing here. But actually uh, what you will see is the 22 here, which is this entire thing here, right? So it's, it's the entire boogie uh, with the wheels, uh, with the gears, and everything is different. The same thing over here. It is actually uh, the number 15, so that's all of these things here. Uh, you see there's some screws and so on that are the same, but the boogie, the wheels, and the gears here are different. So then you might ask, why is, why is this different uh, between the uh, Macklin and the Trix edition? Well, the, the simple explanation is that if you, um, if you look at the wheels, let me just uh, delete some of these things here again. If you look at the wheels here, on the Macklin, this wheel and the axle and the other wheel are actually connected, right? Because on the Macklin, uh, the two rails are connected. If we go ahead and look at the, um, the Trix one, which we have uh, over here. Uh, let me just go one page up. So here we have the Trix one. Um, then uh, let me just delete these ones here. Um, from the drawing, it looks the same. But if you look here, the axle and the wheels, they are actually not electrically uh, connected. And why is that? Because if I got the uh, tricks, I got two rails, and those are the ones that feeds the power, where one is plus and the other one is minus, or red and black, or in DCC, let's just say two different. Uh, so they are not allowed to. So actually what uh, uh, Macklin Tricks has decided to do is it's the entire boogie, which is kind of nice because otherwise you'll have to disassemble everything to actually change the axles here. So uh, that's uh, the main difference. It's the decoder 
and it's uh, basically the boogies and the axles. And now it's time uh, to open up the goodies. Uh, remember there's uh, two screws underneath and then we should be able uh, to get it loose. Um, it would be ideal if you had something that can hold it uh, upside down. You can buy uh, various holders for that. It's also good to have uh, somewhere to uh, put uh, screws and uh, anything else. And I must admit uh, when I'm doing stuff like this, even though um, I'm uh, putting it on YouTube, I might actually uh, record anyways or take pictures regularly. Such that when I screw up something, I can always go back and see uh, how it is. All right. I don't have anything uh, to hold it upside down, so we're just gonna try and look at it. Um, we see here there's uh, one screw over there hidden by a boogie and another one there. So let me just uh, unscrew uh, the first one here. And it actually uh, came out. All right, and then we need the other screw over here. Okay. Good thing to have a magnetic screwdriver, which uh, also, by the way, can be bad. Electronics don't necessarily like it. So I think I should be able to just pull it gently off. All right. I can uh, put the... Uh, well... You can see I can't just put it down because there's something sticking out here. So if I just put it down, that won't be good. So the best is probably to put it on the side on something soft so it doesn't scratch. So I'm going to put it on the green over here. And then we have the uh, internals here. If I look here at this boogie, I see a red and a brown wire coming up here and they actually go up to this board here yeah so there's a red and a brown coming from down here if i look at the other end yes i can also see a red and a brown going down to this boogie as well let me turn it around yeah so i got a red and a brown and if i look at this it looks like the uh, Brown goes down to a little uh, clamp there and the uh, red just disappears down. I would almost bet that the red disappears down here. And um, if you noticed, now I already goofed up because I've forgotten uh, which one uh, was one and uh, which one uh, was two. Uh, bogey one and bogey two. Uh, I want to put uh, the one at cab one. That's where I want to put the slider. So I'm just going to turn off the video and review uh, how it looked when I opened it. So um, this is cap end one I could see on the video. You can see the speaker is here. Um, so this is the one where I want to try and pry off the uh, slider underneath. You can see it's here. I'm going to try and see if I can get something underneath. Yeah, but it just seems like it bends when I do this. I'm not quite sure what to do. Um, of course, it doesn't matter too much if I break it, but I don't like breaking stuff unless I have to. Because I'm, why doesn't it matter? Because I'm going to put another slide on. It doesn't feel like anything is yielding when I'm doing anything here. Interesting. Is it this entire thingy that can go off? Oh, maybe it's in the entire thingy. Let me find the one that's a little more sturdy. Yes, I think it's uh, the entire thingy here that goes off. Yes, this is the trick. You have to get it underneath the plastic here. You see that? You try the other end here. Okay, just be careful. All right, whoop, 
and there it went off. Where did it go? Uh, we have it here. You can see this uh, was the slider that was on there before. You see it was upside long, down like this, so it was touching the wheels and then feeding here. Okay. Um, Yeah, here's some of the things you have to be careful of. You see, while I was holding it, something else slid off here. It looks like uh, something here to the side. I can probably snap that on again. Okay. Now, this one here is where the slider was. If we look over here, I don't know if you can see it. It looks like that's actually the red that disappears down here. Um which would match the colors actually of the tree uh, rail. So this is red, so the center, and this is the uh, brown for the uh, for the rail. To be sure, let's uh, examine uh, the uh, connections to the rail with the um, um, ohm meter. So you can see here when uh, these two ends uh, touches, there's a connection. So we can uh, start by uh, testing it out. I'm gonna put the uh, black here on the red first. Um, let's see if I can hold it there easily. I'm gonna try here with the first boogie up here first. And then when I hit the center, which is the pickup, it beeped as expected. Uh, I checked the wheels, it looks okay. It's only the center here. How about the other end? You see uh, there's a wheel down here. I think this wheel is supposed to as well. Well, now I can't get a connection again. Yes, there's a connection. There's a connection. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So that's basically uh, what we expected, right? So we expected here at cab one, this connection here I took off that goes up to the red. All of these uh, other wheels are not connected. Down here, we expect this pickup to take these two wheels to red as well. That comes up down here. So that actually means that uh, these two wheels, I don't want to red anymore, right? Because I only want the uh, center up here. So I only want the center up here on boogie one. For the red, I don't want any of the wheels to red down here which means down here at uh, this end of the board, I need to disconnect the red and I can actually put it over on the brown. All right, let me uh, try and double check the wheels. So this one here, oh, let me just see. I think I got a connection now. No, I don't have a connection now. See this wheel, yes, this wheel, yes, and slip this wheel, yes, but on the other side, I will not get any pickup. Uh, unfortunately, that's how it is. It's wired here on the tricks one. See, this one I'll get, this one I'll get. Uh, so basically, if we uh, look at the tricks one, they have separated these wheels from these wheels, or they have isolated them, right? So I'll still be able to pick up here. I'll have a slider here. Down on this side here, I can pick up from wheels on this side. And I'll be able to pick up uh, on these two through that little uh, thingy here when I resolder the red wire. Unfortunately, it means I will have two up here that won't go to the brown. But I think it's okay. I think we'll survive. We have um, five wheels on one side and we got at least uh, two wheels on the other. So I think we'll be okay. And here comes the nerve wracking uh, moment where I want to desolder the red uh, and actually put it on the brown. Let's uh, see if I can succeed. Uh, let's see if I can succeed in desoldering the red here. Okay, the red is off. All right, let me uh, tin it just a little. All right, let's 
Let's see if we can get it on. All right, I think I succeeded. Now let's see if um, we short circuited anything. So um, we take our multimeter again and we double check. So first I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna check is there's no uh, connection between where the red was before and the brown now. Okay, yes, it does beep. No, it doesn't look like it. I'm gonna check from red to red in the other end. Oh, red to brown or brown to brown works. And uh, the brown to red doesn't work. So I think uh, we succeeded. Let's check the wheels here and see if we got them moved. So these two wheels here should be brown and indeed they are. And they're brown on the other side and this one is not. Excellent. So our operation uh, succeeded. Now it's uh, time to put the slider on on a uh, cap in one. Um, I basically just bought the sliders that uh, fit with the uh, Macklin version of the locomotive. So this is uh, Macklin E206370. Uh, so let's see if we can get some sliders out from here. Well, some, I only need one, right? And uh, we can see it has a couple of hooks here. It's got some metal down there. If we compare it to the one we took out, it also had some hooks, you see. And then it has some metal, but it's actually uh, black, blackened here, so it's hard to see. Um, but I think the important part is uh, this metal here on top of the slider uh, needs to uh, fit with this one which means that it will sit out here, the slider. So between uh, wheel two or uh, one and two. Uh, what's interesting is if I uh, look at the Macklin one, it's actually uh, mounted between uh, wheel two and three instead. Uh, but I guess that's why there was a difference in the model numbers uh, on the bogies, as we talked about before. So I'm just gonna try and click this one in. I don't know if there's any magic to it here. Oh, it just slid right in. Excellent. So now we have it here. Okay. I will uh, double check with my uh, continuity tester to see uh, that it's actually okay from the slider. Okay, so I wanna put it on the red wire, where do we have the red wire? I think that's the red, and then on the slider. So this is the red, and this is the slider. Good, and nothing to the wheels. Excellent. And I went from brown to the wheels. Yes, I got that. Excellent. So I think uh, our operation has succeeded. Um, so now we just need to uh, assemble it again. So we need to find our screwdriver. I got that here. Um, we need to make sure this was, uh, oh, wait a second, I've got a wire around my arm. This is the speaker end, so that's cap one. This is cap one, so I should be able to just, be able to slide it on again. I think it's best to just put it down, okay. So it's here. Fortunately, my screws haven't disappeared. Okay. So uh, here we have the hole. We got one screw here. If I was wise, I probably tested it before I screwed it together. I guess I'm brave. Okay. Then we need to find the other one. Um, and be careful when you screw it in. You saw it slipped for me. That's actually uh, not a good idea. These uh, screws are not the, uh, let's say, if they get uh, too damaged, you'll have trouble uh, disassembling it in the future. Okay, so let's see if we can get this one in. Yeah. All right. 
It looks like our locomotive is ready. Now uh, let's uh, put it on the track. So um, I have changed the wires back. So now it's uh, red to the uh, center and uh, brown to the uh, to the rail again. I am on the uh, contact track as well. Um, but we should be okay because uh, we actually did uh, make it so that we could get uh, um, rail contact on both sides inside the locomotive. Uh, but really this is the moment of truth. If I, um, I did uh, do a few tests to the wheels, but I didn't test that I accidentally uh, short circuited something on the board inside. So I've accidentally did that. We'll probably just see smoke and nothing happening. Um, so let's try and go out of stop mode now and uh, turn on light and we see there's light on it. Excellent. We got sound as well. And uh, yeah, the locomotive drives. Cool. So let's uh, try and summarize uh, what we've done in this video and actually trying to conclude was the conversion really a success? Um, first of all, the uh, difficulty you often find is there's no instructions. Uh, it can be difficult to figure out where to place the slider. I was actually lucky there was some place where I could uh, put it on. But it could be that you have to glue it on or something like that. And then what is then the challenge is what you do uh, when you have to replace it. Um, you can also risk that there's not enough space for the slide underneath. It, it is actually uh, quite high and it needs to be springy so it can go through the turnouts and so on. Uh, so that's a challenge. Uh, you could uh, risk that it needs a new decoder. Although for the most cases, uh, the uh, Macklin controllers also uh, support uh, DCC, so you should be uh, reasonably okay. Uh, then there can be um, some uh, two rail. Maybe uh, it, it, it can be very difficult, again, back to no instructions to figure out where the power is, uh, what's the center, uh, 
uh, what's the rail when it's converted, what was originally one rail and the other, and some two rail locomotives actually have a powered chassis. So the entire chassis might actually be of metal and actually be powered, which can cause you some problems to figure out what to do. And then don't forget, if you do this, uh, the warranty is void, so there is no warranty anymore, so you will break the warranty. If uh, we look at the conversion I did, um, well, what was uh, some of the, uh, the bad things of the conversion? Uh, well, if you look at it, on the first boogie here, I had to take out the uh, power pickup to all the wheels, so all the wheels on here, they will no longer uh, be picking up power. So on my first boogie here, uh, one side uh, will not be picking up power from the rail. Most uh, times that's not a problem. If you use contact track, what if that's actually the powered rail on that side, then you actually uh, do have a, a, a challenge or you can have a challenge, right? Uh, the other thing is if you look down here on the Macklin, uh, the slider originally here is between uh, wheel uh, two and three. Uh, where I, uh, on the tricks, actually had to place it here between uh, wheel uh, one and two because that's where it fit on that boogie. Um, so this is a, a very, very typical problem. Uh, where do I actually place the slider? So if we look at it, um, typically I would say a converted lo locomotive is never ideal. Um, the first challenge is always the slider position. It's not necessarily ideal. You saw in this case it was, but if it's a other locomotive, I may not be able to place it exactly where it's nice, such that it has a good balance, the boogie it travels over nicely over the turnout and so on. So what I have observed so far is that my converted locomotive, where the slider is a little more forward, has some challenges uh, with some of the turnouts. It seems though, as I drive it, and, and I don't know if the uh, slider gets more used and, and so on, uh, or something gets more adjusted, then it seems like it's less every time I pass the turnout. But the, you can have those challenges. Um, the uh, other challenge uh, there is uh, uh, with respect to it not being ideal is, of course, the uh, wheel current pickup I talked about before. You might not be able to uh, actually convert it entirely such that you can pick up uh, uh, rail current uh, on all wheels uh, due to however the boogies or the wheels are, are wired. Um, and if you are using... Um, well, I should say it this way. I am using Macklin C-Track, so then you uh, won't have any troubles uh, with wheels uh, from two rail manufacturers. But the wheels from two rail manufacturers are actually slightly different than the one from Macklin. Um, there can be a little with the shape, there can be a little with the flanges and so on. Um, and if you're using M-Track or K-Track, uh, so the Macklin M-Track or K-Track, they're more sensitive to it. I have not, so far, cross fingers, knock on wood, had a challenge on the Macklin C-Track. But yes, that could also be a problem. So I should actually also uh, add an extra here that is actually uh, the wheels. Okay. Um, so why would you do this? Well, if you can't find it on tree rail and you really, really want it, then you can consider it. But as you see, there are some difficulties you have to overcome, including uh, no instructions for how to do it. Uh, you will void the warranty, warranty, and I would say it don't ever expect a, a local to be completely ideal as one that's actually designed for Macklin, right? Um, and of course, um, as you saw here, it wasn't too difficult for me to, uh, to actually uh, convert. I could actually convert it by, uh, uh, by just uh, uh, resoldering one wire. That was basically what I had to do, and then attach one slider. I didn't really have to do anything else, and then it works. I could reuse uh, the decoder and so on. You may not be that uh, um, lucky with others. Um, I would say the easiest uh, to uh, convert are probably uh, from manufacturers that produces both. So in this case, it was uh, Macklin Trix. They produce the same locomotive. Rocco, Pico, Brava uh, does the same thing. 
But then you might ask yourself, why on earth uh, convert it? Uh, then why not just buy the uh, Macklin version? Well, maybe it's sold out. Maybe it's an old one you could find. I have um, earlier, uh, for many years ago, I bought some uh, American brands and got it converted by a company in California many years ago. I don't even know if they exist. I always had some challenges uh, with those locomotives as well. Uh, I didn't have the patience uh, to, uh, to actually uh, make it work because since the loco is never ideal, you, ha you might have to adjust the slider a little, uh, bend it a little, uh, make sure everything works and so on. So, so there can be small adjustments you can do to actually do this. You have to have the patience to do this as well. I never had that. So those locomotives are at home in a box and, and I've never opened them. So was it a success? To me, yes, it was a success. I could get it converted. I had kind of hoped that it would have a different prototype ID, uh, the one from Macklin compared, or the one from Trix uh, compared to the one from Macklin, uh, because that's actually the case if you look at uh, freight and passenger cars. If you uh, buy uh, the same one uh, from Trix instead of Macklin, it's typically a different prototype ID. So I thought naively that was the same for the locomotives. However, that's actually not the case. Uh, and I really shouldn't have no reason uh, to do so. If, um, if there is a different road ID or prototype ID, it actually specifically says it on the Macklin and Trickling side. And in this case, it actually says it is exactly the same locomotive. Um, so I actually fooled myself here. However, now I got two uh, nice locomotives I can drive. If you like this video, uh, please uh, hit the uh, like button. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Uh, actually, subscribing on your YouTube is actually free and it gives you the advantage that you can uh, uh, easier find the channel and you can actually uh, also turn on the little notification bell. So don't uh, forget to uh, turn that on and then you'll be notified about upcoming videos. Enjoy!